Hello everybody, it is me, Ed Briscatuzzi, and today we're here talking about The Rising of the Shield Hero Episode 4. Damn, there was a lot of stuff in this episode, especially with the, the duel between the spear hero and the shield hero. Well, at the beginning of this episode, you saw a very cute and adorable moment with Raftalia feeding uh, Nafumi at uh, the ball that they were having after the wave attack, because since they defeated all the enemies and they were able to... And basically, Nafumi saved civilians when it was just the rest of the heroes defeating the main f attack force of the bad guys of the wave. And he saw how they were celebrating at the king's palace, and then everyone is just praising the three heroes and just leaving Nafumi, even though that Nafumi wasn't really wanting to be a part of it because of how pissed off he still is, and he's just sitting at a window. And then Raftali is just like trying to like get him to like socialize and trying to get him to see food, but since she still doesn't know the whole entire story of why he hates the other heroes, she's just uh, trying her best, but then she's. Uh, but then Nafumi just tells her to just go and just do whatever she wants. And then he just looks at the window, checking his heels and stuff like that. But then Raftalia comes back and then feeds him pancakes. It was like pan in, the, in the preview, when I was looking at the preview last week, it looked like pancakes. But it's just like a cake, and then he ate it. And then he was just very shy about it. And then after that, uh, Spear Hero was being jealous because he's like a freaking womanizer. He like, I think because like his whole entire group is basically women and he's trying to like get Raftalia because he thinks that all women are on his side even though that that's not really true. He's just very like a very bad hero. And then you saw how, I like the very added fact how he did like the whole entire like European thing where he took, or French thing where he takes off his glove and then throws it at Nafumi and then asks him to a duel. And then Nafumi just doesn't want to have anything to do with it because the spirit hero for, like tells Nafumi that he's forcing Mortelia to do things, but he says no to that like accusation and just walks away. But then the king steps in because he's like as big as the douchebag as his daughter, the red haired girl. And then he just uh, asks Nafumi to do the challenge. So then a guard grabs off Talia and then like puts a, his puts his hand over her mouth. In the manga, I know this. I, I remember this scene. Like you know that I'm forgetting things. They put a, they, they they put like a mouthpiece over her in the manga. I think they put like a like a like a cloth over her mouth to make it so that way she couldn't talk. But in the anime, they used a, a hand over her mouth, which it, which it would have been even worse if they did the the cloth. If I'm remembering correctly. And he saw how they ended up doing the battle. They were both in their respective places. And people were, f were looking down on Afumi the whole entire time. One thing that I noticed in this battle is that the spear hero is level 43. So he's like 20 levels higher than Nafumi because it showed Nafumi at level 21. And a clarification happened this episode where I found out that apparently the other heroes can use multiple swords. Because in the manga, they don't they don't like show it that much. Like, they, like it always looks like they're always using the same attacks over and over again. Because they only focus on, you know, the main character, which is obvious. But it was cool seeing him switch between different spears. Because during that battle in the manga, it didn't really happen like that. If I'm remembering correctly, he didn't really switch that much. Or maybe I just didn't notice it. But it was cool seeing him switch between like a chaos spear and like a different spears and then attack Nafumi. And you saw Nafumi getting very much attacked. And then you saw how even before the the battle, Nafumi tried to grab his sword again, but he wasn't able to. He saw that because how powerful the spear hero is, because he kept on getting attacks on Nafumi, making him bleed all over the place. Uh, Nafumi had to use cheap tricks and had... It was really weird how... The his like the monsters on Nafumi's body always appear and disappear. It really makes no sense. He also found out that uh, that apparently the wave starts. He's able to like teleport and de teleport things like because of the wave. So that's why uh, I guess like he can bring stuff with him, or he can also bring Raftalia with him during waves. Then he starts like attacking uh, the spear hero with all of his monsters, and then he ends up getting some pretty good attacks. And he starts like combining his shields, which is pretty awesome. If he used all of his shields, he could probably do some pretty awesome combos, which he did this episode where he used his uh, air shield to like strike the spear hero right in the gut and knock him down. It's a uh, shield prison to just pr to just put him into a hole with the monsters, and the monsters were attacking him inside of it. But then everyone in the stage is just like looking down at him one one thing that i noticed is that apparently the church pope is watching that wasn't shown in the manga but that's pretty good foreshadowing so then you saw how the spear hero was down on his knees and then nafumi was about to win and then you saw that the spear hero wasn't going to surrender so then nafumi was about to to have the 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 final strike but then uh, the red hair girl came in and then ruined everything she used magic and cheated like i know that nafumi sort of cheated by using monsters with him but it was an unfair battle, like at of course. But I think that if Nafumi didn't use like the uh, the monsters, he still 
probably had like that like chance to still use his combo attacks to defeat the spirit hero, but still I guess but it's still different. I don't I don't know I don't know because like it is a pretty cheap move with her using the magic and then knocking she like knocked him pretty far and then uh, the spirit hero ended up defeating the monsters in the shield prison and then they started to to attack. Nafumi just directly and then ended up using a, li a lightning attack and then just man seeing Raftalia's face during during like the ending like during the portions where the spear hero was having the upper hand she's just like screaming she's just, like you would think that like they they think that Nafumi is like this guy that can like mind control her and stuff like that but man I can't wait to see when you see her reaction after this because I've only reviewed the first 10 minutes because that's where the middle credit scene was but uh, honestly the battle was pretty awesome I really enjoyed it I thought that the music was pretty cool having it like a uh, like that like that like rhythm that was going on was pretty cool, and then uh, seeing also seeing the you could see the bow hero and the sword hero are like slightly, 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 slightly a little bit just praising Nafumi just a little bit during the battle, seeing how he was seeing how he was somehow able to win. So then they have just like that tiny little bit of respect for him, but they still just think of him really badly, especially when they like when they were talking about him at the beginning of the of the episode, but uh. Yeah, I'll be back in a few minutes to read the rest of this episode. It's pretty good so far. Okay, I am back. And god damn, man. The rest of this episode, they didn't even have the ending song. Man, this episode was both, like, the the first half of the second half of this episode was just completely just depressing and sad. But then, man, the rest of the episode was so freaking beautiful. Amazing. Fantastic. That's all I gotta say about that. Like, the music, the, the, sh the event shown, everything. Like, 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 so... After that, after the mid-credit scene, you saw how Nafumi was just having like a breakdown. He was having a breakdown, and we saw a scene where it said "cursed shields activated." Wow, that is some foreshadowing if I've never seen it. Just cursed, like something activated. You saw that the shield was burning up, and you saw him just. You saw like these clouds going around him. When that scene happened, especially in like when that scene happened, I was like, "Does everyone else see that?" Because there's like lots of scenes. Like if you watch like the series My Her My Hero Academia, when a when Deku activates like his all for one like or one for all power there's lightning around his body do people see that do people see the lightning do people see like the clouds forming around nafumi did like him just going into like this deep depressing mode like everything is just going black and white like blue black and white he's just seeing everything bad you, you saw him seeing raftalia the way that he sees her like before he before she changed during like the rest of the episode you see her as a, like you see them taking off the curse off of her because he lost you saw him earlier like trying to get up from the battle saying that the right-haired girl cheated he tried to tell the spirit hero and tried to tell everyone but then he ends up figuring out that the right-haired girl is is working with with the king the father of her because she's a princess and he saw how they bought everyone off in the whole entire stadium to not say that she cheated like even like you saw like a like a representative talk to the pope about it i guess uh, who knows what that like conversation was like it was cool seeing like him in his head like like trying like you saw him like in his head see her turn into a kid and see her walk away and like see her leave and you saw him being delusional and he's just like like just trying to smash his shield you see him try to throw his shield you see him just go through this whole entire like depressing just like thing or he just doesn't want to be the shield anymore you see him, he just wants to run away he just wants to just not be there anymore it was like a very like amazing scene to witness and they're seeing like his like thing like like that scene was amazing to see in the manga through the pages, but then seeing it animated, seeing the voice actor like like his voice was really cool because he was in the other series series Bunny, Bunny Girl Senpai, and there were scenes like that where you see the voice actor doing his best, and in this he's doing his best to convey those feelings that the Shield Hero is feeling that Nofumi is feeling. And then after that scene, you saw Raftalia after she got the curse got rid of her. You saw how the Spirit Hero was just like you're free now, and like the the king and stuff like that, you're free now. And then she slapped the Spirit Hero, I think. And then started like spouting facts at him, and he's just like, "What? Are you still brainwashed? Like the curse is gone. She can't be brainwashed anymore. The curse is gone. Like like if he was like if she was seriously cursed and brainwashed, if you remove the curse, she wouldn't have it anymore. She wouldn't be cursed anymore." And then you saw Nafumi starting to cry because uh because of her like being there anymore, and he's just like depressed, just crawling on the ground. And you see like her walk up to Nafumi, and then she tries to like tell him that that, that she would stay with him. You even saw how the uh, the sword hero and the bow hero came into the battle because they because you saw them because they noticed the cheating happens. Then they were talking to the the king and to the spear hero and telling him that that mine did cheat. The red haired girl I just, I just remember her name mine was cheating and then no one would say that it say that it was. But you saw two heroes with with telling them the facts and then the she then the spear hero is just like there's no way. And then Raftalia is just trying to get to Nafumi in his dark place. His shield is just glowing from like just like the. The, the curse shields is just like corroding him and he's just like there and then she's like trying to get to him that he just kept, keeps on saying go away leave me alone you don't want me anymore he keeps on like trying to like say lies to himself and then she just keeps on like reverting himself 
uh, she just keeps on like trying to get to him and get to him, and then she ends up hugging him, which is a very adorable moment, trying to get to him, uh, trying to have like this beautiful moment with him, and then he just uh, uh, tries to like listen to her, and then he ends up noticing that that the words that she's saying is like what she said before the wave attacked last episode or the episode before that, I think it was last episode maybe, and then he like she finally gets to him, and then he looks at her, and then he notices that she isn't a kid anymore because that's the delusion that he was having before, and he's like says like who are you? And in that moment, you're just like you see him like awaken to back to his previous self from the first episode when he first got to this world where he was his happy self, where he was his like normal self, and then now he's going to revert back to his normal self. Which is good, because he's been, like, angry and pissed out this whole entire time. It was more so in the manga, where you saw him being even more pissed than he was in this, but it was conveyed sort of well. And the king, you saw King and Mind just looking at him, and then they're just like, uh, we should just walk away, this is getting awkward. And then you saw how, apparently, he, he just slept on her, like, legs, got, like, that lap pillow for, like, the rest of the episode. They, like, slept there the whole night at the dueling station. And then after that, Fumi woke up, and then... They both went to go get something to eat. Apparently she made something from the scraps from the party from the beginning of the episode, and then she gave it to him. And then he ate the sandwich that that Raftalia made, and then he's just like, this is good. I can finally taste things. Because in, the previous, cause in the previous episodes, he couldn't eat anymore because of how distasteful and how much he hated this world. But now, since he accepts everything, and he's just like, and he has like a person beside him like forever now, Raftalia, uh, he, and he's able, finally able to eat food. He finally can just have start from zero. Back to re zero references. I think I did a zero reference in my first or second episode review of this, but it was an amazing episode. It was cool that the that like I said before, the ending song wasn't here, but uh, yeah, those were all my my thoughts, my opinions, and my discussion on this episode. I really enjoyed it. It was pretty awesome. I can't wait until the next episode because in the preview it said that the next episode is called Philo, but it's Firo. And I think that the bird girl, the bird girl slash like bird thing that we saw in the opening song is probably going to be shown in the next episode, which honestly, they're going through this pretty quickly because I think that that uh, this stuff isn't supposed to happen until what? Episode 10 or maybe episode. No, I mean, this stuff is probably isn't. I think this stuff doesn't happen until chapter 15 or chapter 20. So or maybe I'm just thinking wrong. But yeah, yeah. If you enjoyed this review slash my thoughts and stuff like that, leave a like. If you didn't enjoy this at all, then leave a dislike. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next week in the next review. And uh, yeah, bye.